Hey everybody, welcome to the show. This week we're talking about the Wyndham Hotel, live from the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida. You're watching The Trip. This is The Trip, episode 44, for the week of January 13th, 2016. The Trip is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation, whether it be theme parks on the West Coast, East Coast, or on the seas. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone. This is The Trip, our crazy attempt at talking about travel, family, and everything in between. I'm Jenny Lynn. And I'm Teresa. And I'm Jackie. And then over in the production nook back there, we have our producer, Craig Williams. Hi. Otherwise known as Gelman. Gelman. Mm -hmm. Is that theme continuing? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if it was carrying over or not. All right. Well, we've got a lot coming up today. We're going to be talking to you about the Wyndham Hotel, but first we have an issue. Oh, that was really quick. Yeah, we're just jumping right in. Issue. No, we're not just jumping right in. Okay, we're slowly strolling into the issue. (laughs) Yeah, so it it takes time to to move from one thing to the next, so. Sorry, I'm just kind of on it today. Yeah, we're going to, we got to sometimes stall for time and look at each other and make those. Make eye contact and do hand signals on the side. Yeah. I can do hand signals. (laughs) <laughs> that one's not allowed on Christy? camera, Teresa. <laughs> All right. Well, for our issue, we had a listener email this week from Heather Jones in Boston, and I thought that I would share it with you guys. She wrote, the reason I'm writing is because of your show on the escape game. I had never heard of such a thing. Your review, and especially the rare raw raw enthusiasm of Craig, made me look into this further. We decided to make the escape game our Christmas family outing this year. Our family did a challenge at Escape the Room in Boston, and we had a blast. We got down to the last clue and didn't quite make it, but we enjoyed every minute. I never would have found this without the trip. Thanks again for the show and for all you do. And then Heather sent us a picture of herself and her family. Oh, it says losers, right? Because they didn't get out of the room. They didn't solve the puzzle in time. Yeah, I got to be honest. I'm glad we didn't go to this one. <laughs> if we have to hold up signs like that. If well, you don't let me just... tell you what happens at the one we do we did go to because I went back over Christmas break as well with my family. Margo and Miller really, really wanted to go, so um, I took them and my boyfriend Tom, and we went to the escape game. Did you win? We were literally punching the code into the door when she opened it and said time was up. So we did not win. And what happened? Well, you know how we all got bumper stickers that said, I escaped because right. we solved the puzzle? Apparently, when you do not solve the puzzle, you still get a bumper sticker. But it's instead of saying, I escaped, it says, I almost escaped. And I think it kind of makes you feel worse. Miller was pretty funny. He was just like, he kept holding this, and they were calling it the sticker of shame. Wow. <laughs> and it's just this horrible reminder <laughs> of how you're a big, fat loser. So, um, yeah, but, but we still had a really good time. Just like Heather and, and her friends, we still had a really good time. And the kids were just all the more motivated to go back again and actually be able to solve it. But I, love it that they have, I love that they have it in her, their hometown, too. That's pretty cool. These rooms are all over the place and just all over the country. And we've, this is, Heather's not the first one to write to us about this. We've actually had quite a few people write to us saying that they've gone to escape rooms near where they live since we aired the show and thanking us for making them aware of this type of experience. And I'm working on one at home. Fun. You want to escape your um, home? No, I'm going to lock one of my children oh. <laughs> in their room. Ooh. And they have to do certain tasks to get out. <laughs> right? they come out. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I might adopt that idea as right? well. Yeah, that's a good one. Ooh. Here's the task you have to do to get out. Yeah. <laughs> Is that abuse? Like, and when they Fold don't and do put it, away your laundry. And when they don't abuse, they don't do it, then they just have to stay. stay There's no getting out. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. 
for what very, we're very cool. Doing. Well, Heather, thank you for writing to us about your experience and how you got that from the trip. We really appreciate it. We hope that all of you will continue to write to us as well. And when you do, we might use your email or comment or text for an issue in an upcoming episode. So um, I think right now we're going to get into some trip talk. I should have been more prepared on that one that time. That was my fault. It's all right. You know, we're, I knew it was we ending. got the new I intro, the ending. new transitions. You saw it coming. We'll get it. We'll get it. What was the... What's your problem, Craig? What What's my problem? Yeah. Uh, it's just the... It, with this show, unlike the other ones, it takes more time to get between the different things because it's actually moving and such. You mean because we have animated yes. little transitions? Yeah. Yes. It's a fun We're funsy. <laughs> I'll accept that answer. Yeah, that one okay. works. That one works. All right, so... Today we're talking about the Wyndham Hotel, which is on Hotel Plaza Boulevard. That's the Disney Springs area on Walt Disney Resort. So not technically a Disney resort, but still very close to it on Disney property. We um, put out the question to you guys whether you think it's a better idea to stay, quote unquote, off property. So a non-Disney resort or on property. And y'all had some really good things to say. We, we got some really great feedback on Facebook, especially. We thought we'd share um, some comments with you. Daniel Fugo said that he likes off-property because there are larger accommodations for a smaller budget. Valid point. Cheryl Fee, di- I think I got that right. Cheryl Fee disagreed, and uh, she said she needed the magic on property. There are some people that just have to have it that way. Donna Costell said she always stays on property because she needs the magic too, but that she once stayed at the Swalfin. That would be the Swan and the Dolphin, which are technically on property, yet not a Disney hotel. She said she loved the location, but it still wasn't the same, wasn't good enough. It didn't have the Disney magic for her. And Renee Gaudet com- commented that she's done both, stayed off property on- and on property. She says she likes staying on property because they make it effortless. She doesn't have to rent a car, and she doesn't have to figure out transfers to and from the airport or even get her luggage. Disney on property lets, but when she stays on property, that let, makes it easier for her as a single mom to go on vacation. However, she says that she thinks that she misses out on some of the off property stuff. You know, it's not as easy to get off property when you are staying on property. Um, she says, my daughter, 12 years old, can do the off, off property stuff when she gets older. So they might, as the kids get older, she might transition to be more of an off property type person. Um, so again, lots of different people with lots of different opinions and valid points on both sides. Mm -hmm. We actually explored the issue ourselves this last week. Uh, Our Jackie stayed at the Wyndham Hotel, as we mentioned, and so we'll be talking about the review of that today, what it was like to stay in an off-property place. So, Teresa, were you going to take the wheel at this point? I could take the wheel. All right. I guess. Um, So I didn't go over. um, JL went over to visit you at the Wyndham. I did not. I chose to stay away. Or was I not invited? <laughs> I don't remember. You were um, definitely you were always invited. invited. I just got busy. It was back to school week. Don't and believe the martyr act I had a bunch here. of crap going on with my kids. So, um, so I'm just going to ask you a few questions. So um, starting off with um, what kind of room did you have? So I had a single room with two queen beds. So it was one room. One room. It wasn't like a suite or a uh, – but they have other op- – what other options do they have? Um, they had a room with a king size bed or two queens were the option I had. She also okay. stayed so. in a room that was in the tower and they had separate little buildings, but then the one tower that kind of just shoots mm-hmm. up straight in the middle. And I think we have a, a picture of that it's coming up here, Craig, maybe. Um, and I don't know if the rooms in the tower maybe cost a little bit more than the others some usually it works that way in a hotel but she was in the main building let's backtrack Mm -hmm. a little bit i think we need to start talking about location first so where actually is it near disney springs so this hotel is located right across the street from the disney marketplace 
So if you are, um, if you don't have a rental car, you can just walk right across the street and be at the Disney marketplace. It's so close. So it's that big intersection. Um, and there's with so much construction going on, um, they have that little bridge that you can walk there over. There are bridges now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are nice. So it makes it so nice. You're not dodging traffic like you used to. Yeah, the pedestrian horrible. walkways are great. Yeah. yeah. So it's about as far away from the airport in Port Canaveral as Disney property is because it's basically yeah. sitting on Disney property. It is. Yep, to it's the sitting edge on of it. Because so. mm-hmm. if you go, so it's right there on Resort, uh, Resort or Hotel Boulevard. And if you are coming in, um, and you enter Walt Disney World property from, um, I think it's 535. Yeah, right. Where the crossroads. Where the crossroads. crossroads yeah, that's is. 535. Mm-hmm. So when you turn in there, you're on Disney property right yeah, there. Yeah, you actually have and to pass through that, you know, the big. Um, where Mickey and Minnie are saying mm-hmm. hi. Yeah, the big welcoming, archy right. thing. Mm hmm. Archie then, thing. This hotel is the very last one on the right hand side before you are actually driving past where all the buses go to the marketplace. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know exactly where it is. Then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's really it's on a cool. corner. It's right, right on a corner. There, right there. Mm-hmm. Has it always been the Wyndham? It was something else before the Wyndham, right? I don't remember that it being anything else, but that I doesn't mean know. it wasn't. I toured this hotel several years ago. Um, how were the rooms? They they needed upgrading then. Was were they? These rooms were actually they they really nice. nice. Yeah, I mean, when I nice. came to visit Jackie and I opened that door, I was like, "Woo! Mm-hmm. <laughs> we put you up in you know these are nice accommodations. They were very clean. They had a, a more modern type look. Mm-hmm. The, the bedding was nice, updated, really well appointed. Yeah. Was, yeah, everything was very nicely. So, what other out. type of amenities do, do they have? They've got a pool, obviously. They had There's the quite a most few beautiful pool. Yeah. Now, one thing I do want to say um, about the tower and the the other rooms that they have. So they do have rooms that you enter into the room from the outside, like a motel. Off the back of the property, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. And then the tower has the inside hallways. So I have a feeling that they upgraded me without me knowing. Because when I booked that resort, I booked the least expensive option. Mm-hmm. And so I I have a feeling that they upgrade. Which actually every, was, how much did you pay for the room? It was uh, $92. For the one night. For the one night, yep. Not bad. Mm-mm. Now, the room was a little bit snug. You know, it wasn't mm-hmm. a huge room. It, it was it was a bit tight, but it wasn't terrible. I think... Mm-mm. It wasn't any any smaller, really, than like a value resort at Disney. I would feel a little cramped with my three kids and myself in there, but it's definitely doable. But how do you feel like it is in value compared to a Disney resort room? Uh, I feel like it's a really, I, I feel like it's a, a better value in a sense for my family, if if I were to bring my family there, um, and the reason for that is that it was. It was very inexpensive, and it felt to me like it was comparable to a Disney moderate resort. Really? At that price? Yeah. Was there a resort fee or a parking fee? There was. The resort fee was included in that rate, but um, they do charge for parking. Now, this is the tricky part about parking, and this is one thing. So they have self-parking for $8 a night. But their self-parking parking lot is very tiny, and it fills up so quickly. But they have valet for $8 as well. So valet and self-parking That's is the, the exact price. same charge when you're spending the night there. And so I, I suppose they do that because they know that they have a tiny self-parking parking lot. Were they taking your car away, though, if they valeted if the... I don't know where they, they put it. They must have reserved spotting, spots for a valet, I guess. I'm not really sure. And when I went to go visit her, there was no option for free parking. I had to pay for valet. But because I was a visitor and not staying at the resort, it was only $5. That's pretty inexpensive. It's not yeah. bad. As compared bad. to when you park at one of the universal resorts, right. it's $22 right. or something like that mm-hmm. a day. So again, reasonable. It stinks that you're having to pay for parking, but you yeah. know it's not outrageous anyway. Yeah, 
I mean, that was the part that I thought was so cool is that they made it affordable. I mean, and their self parking, I will say the parking lot is far from the lobby where you check in. So it's, and the, the port of cachet where you pull up is far, it's up a hill. So if you've got a lot of luggage, you're going to want to load, you know, take that off before you do use the self parking if it's available when you go there. You don't want to haul all that up that hill. Yeah. Now you said that you thought that it was a better value than than the Disney Resort for your family. I mean, do you have more about why you feel that way? I I feel that way because I really like it when I can stay that close to Disney property for less than a hundred bucks. Um, that's kind of where I uh, I like to draw the line because we come down for a quick weekend. And, um, you know, that works that less than a hundred bucks makes it really affordable and the beds were comfortable. I mean, we'll get into more of that. Uh, the amenities are pretty cool. The pool area, fantastic. Um, it's kind of a big package for me. Yeah. And, um, and they have the shuttle that takes you to the theme parks they do so they even have the transportation provided that can uh take you there so yeah. there's a lot of not all the perks of a disney resort but some of the perks of a disney resort definitely um for less of price and the location's great mm-hmm. um the only thing you're really um not getting when you compare it to a disney resort is if you're flying in mm-hmm. you don't have disney's magical express with this resort so course for us we drive over so that's why that's why it really works for us but if you're flying in that might be something to consider because disney's magical express does not go to those resorts even though they are on disney property but you could uber or take a cab over absolutely yeah, and it's only about 35 40 minutes from the airport yeah right and yeah. port canaveral's about an hour away i think yeah it's about an hour okay so um Let's talk about the amenities. Let's talk about that pool. Oh. The pool was amazing. It really it, was. It had this, okay, it was really big for the for the first off thing. And then the main pool had this waterfall cascading feature in the middle of it. Very pretty. And there was a kids interactive water play area as well that was pretty um, extensive. I mean, it was big and there was like coconuts dumping water everywhere yeah what i thought was fun although at the same time as a mom you'd have to be a little bit more on point um the kids water play area opened up directly into the pool they were those areas were Mm -hmm. not separated so if you had a kid that was in the water area uh, especially if they were small you would need to watch them carefully because in the blink of an eye they could be there's no lifeguards Mm -hmm. you could be out in deeper waters well they're there weren't at the time that we were out there because we were out there in the evening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They also had a hot tub area, which was nice. And um, it, it was a pool bar too, secluded. right? They it was did. kind of up, the hot tub was. It was elevated up and yeah. secluded off a little bit to the side. Something that I also thought was interesting, you know, at Disney resorts, they have the main pools and then they also have the quiet pools. Those two things are usually in different locations in the resort, though. In this, they were in the same pool area. There were two separate pools. There was the main fancy one with the mm-hmm. water slide, and then there was one that was less exciting, and I just imagine that's probably where the you know, people that wanted to swim laps without you know, children splashing water in their face went. Um, yeah, there was the pool bar area that had a really nice like little lounge set up in mm-hmm. front of it, and there was also private cabanas set up around this pool area that I'm, I'm assuming that you could pay money to rent uh, if you chose. And um, what else was out there? That was then way, way off to the side. That was also where the designated smoking area was. And, um, and they had this whole thing too, where you would get, you know, your towels, they provided towels mm-hmm. for you at. So it, but it was just, it was really well lit even at night. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was just yeah. a really relaxing and, uh, atmosphere even had a sense of it had a luxurious vibe to it as well. I which felt that caught, too. Yeah, it caught me off guard a little bit. I don't mm-hmm. think I was expecting something that felt so fancy. I don't know why, but and their outdoor furniture that they had by where the pool bar was, 
we were really trying to get a copy of the menu for the pool bar, mm-hmm. but they had some some awnings that were uh, closing the windows, so we couldn't, you know, we couldn't see their menu boards. But the outdoor furniture was beautiful. They had like a U shaped huge sofa. I mean, you could really kick back. That area was covered. So if, you know, down here we get sudden rain showers in the middle of the afternoon, there was plenty of seating under cover. It was really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And it was extensive. I mean, they had the one U-shaped lounge, you know, couchy thing. But there was also other little sitting areas around it. So it Mm -hmm. it was just a really nice area that you wouldn't mind spending a few hours, I've actually eaten at that pool. Have you? Yeah, a couple years ago. Yeah? And it's a nice little area. It's... I don't remember why I was there. I was visiting someone, I guess, but I remember sitting at the pool bar, and uh, th- I remember that pool. It was nice. Cool. Yeah, and you just—that's the impression that we got. Mm-hmm. It was just very relaxing, laid back, nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you'd want to spend the day there. You know, some of the hotels, they just have a little pool. It's not terribly exciting. This one, you'd you could spend a day there. Yeah, they had I enough mean, features that made it interesting. They did. Yep. So if you wanted to take a, a pool day in the middle of you know your five day vacation, you could really do that at this resort. It was it was that nice. They had some other amenities there as well. I guess we can you know briefly mention that one was they had a lounge area in the um, in the lobby, the Eclipse Lounge, where you could go sit down, have a drink. Um, they also had a fitness center that was open 24 hours to use. Um, they had spa services. You could pay for spa services there. On site, massage. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted really to. Cool. And um, they had laundry facilities as well. So, you know, you're there for two weeks and you've got little kids and you need mm-hmm. to... Wash some clothes. You had that available to you. It was the whole setup, folding tables, washers, dryers, soap dispensers, all that. Um, we mentioned the shuttle that they have to Disney. They also had a car rental counter right there in the lobby. So if you did need to rent a car, there were people there to assist with that. Um, a ticket counter for buying tickets to the park. And they had a quick service area. Um, I forget what the name was. This thing was called Sundial, maybe? Yeah. Where you could get little snacks and sandwiches and such. And um, there was a really, you know, a spacious seating area off to the side um, where you could just sit and eat it right there and then be out the door. And then right it, in the lobby, yeah. Mm-hmm. One thing that made me really happy about Sundial is that they had a whole coffee bar. So if you're a coffee girl like me, you can get espresso there, coffee, all of it right there. Yeah. Love that part. You know, and grab it on your way about, to the shuttle um, to go. Standard restaurants, basic. Do they have a sit-down restaurant also? They did. They mm-hmm. had a table service restaurant. Uh, I think it was called Lake View Restaurant, actually. And we had dinner there. Did you yeah. want to talk a little bit about that? So dinner there, we did. And it was really good. We were surprised when we first walked into the restaurant because there wasn't very, there weren't very many people there at all. I think there were maybe two tables that actually had guests. Um, But it was a nice atmosphere, and our waitress was right over. And um, We had some really good food. And, yeah, yeah, the service was good. She was very honest about what she thought was good, what she thought wasn't good, and helped kind of direct Mm -hmm. those um, decisions. I had Mm -hmm. almond-crusted chicken, and with asparagus, um, it, it was amazing. This food was really really good i was i was surprised it was it was worth remembering and um jackie had the grouper on recommendation i did and i've never had grouper so it was it was kind of i saw salmon on their menu but here's the thing i'm used to i'm used to um alaskan salmon so I had an experience once where I had Atlantic salmon and I don't like the flavor of it. It's got a completely different flavor. So I asked her if it was um, Pacific salmon or Atlantic and she thought that it was flown in from Alaska, but she wasn't sure. And so she was nice enough to actually go and find out because I didn't want to order it if I knew it was Alaska or if I knew it was Atlantic because I knew I wouldn't like it. So it was really cool. Anyway, she went and found out that it was indeed Atlantic salmon. And then she recommended the grouper, which I've never had that before. Never had it. And 
So I was like, all right, let's do this. And it was good. Mm-hmm. I was glad I got it. Now, something that's interesting about this restaurant is even though this is not a Dis- Disney resort, they still have a character meal here. They have a character I breakfast. They did, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, in the same restaurant, they have a you know buffet section. Obviously, it wasn't set up when we were in there for dinner, but um, on certain days of the week, I believe it's like Tuesday and Thursday or something. I, we took I don't, I don't remember what the sign said, but it was like three days out of the week where Disney characters would come in and have breakfast with you. I, I mean, is that I had never heard of that in not a not a, a, actual Disney characters. Yep. Well, they said character breakfast with... Wasn't like, you know, Marty Mouse and... No, there it was no, like Goofy an and Mickey no. and... I believe it's, uh, they do it there and then I know they're also doing it at uh, the Four Seasons. Okay. It's mm-hmm. on, so I think they do have uh, deals set up with some of the hotels in the area yeah. uh, in terms of that. So it is, it's a nice little thing to do. Yeah, well, that, that, like I said, that's the one that kind of caught me off guard because when we're talking about some of the perks of a Disney resort without being a Disney resort, this mm-hmm. is one of them. You can get a character meal breakfast right there. Yep, and it's Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Okay. And they're Disney characters. Um, it's the sunshine breakfast time. I was looking to see. I, I don't remember seeing where they actually specified which characters were there. And I imagine that they do that. I, I think that Pluto is always there, but I imagine that they do that just because it might be subject to change. Yeah, I'm sure that it is. Mm-hmm. Um, other things they had, there was a very small business center and tennis courts, little things like that. Those were all there. But um, I think we should talk more about the room. Yes. What exactly, so what was in your room? So I loved the. I loved this room. I thought it was so cool the way they had this room set up. Um, when you walked in, they had a floor to ceiling double closet and, um, you know, hang your stuff, throw your suitcase in it. But they also had some cubbies underneath the counter. And sometimes you don't know where you're going to put your shoes. And I've seen pictures of shoes in the drawers. And I've seen people kind of get on each other's cases on hotel reviews and whatnot for putting shoes in the drawers because then whatever's in the bottom of the sole of your shoes is in the drawer and whatever. I thought it was really cool that they had these little cubbies because if you've got kids and a few of them and you've got four pairs of shoes to take off, it's nice to have those four little cubbies to stick them in. Um, and, and it's located right next to the closet. Yeah, right ne- right there. And then on top of the cubbies, they had the uh, the ice bucket, the glasses, and some mm-hmm. hooks for hanging, you know, jackets and bags and such. Yeah. It was just kind of cute and cozy. Yeah, it was really handy. Because a lot of times people wear those lanyards with their, you know, park tickets in the little vinyl envelope thing. And it's nice to just be able to take that off and hang it somewhere. Because... Mm-hmm. I don't know how many times when our kids were younger, you're like, okay, everybody grab your lanyards. Well, I don't know where my lanyard is. All right. That's always the drama. And then 20 minutes later, you're finally ready to leave the room, right? Is there a refrigerator and a microwave? There is. Yep. Nice refrigerator. Um, It had a little bit of a a freezer section in it. Not big, but there was mm -hmm. a bit of a freezer section in it. Um, There was not... There was not a microwave. Remember there being a microwave. No, there was not a microwave, just the fridge. Yeah. And then there was also a um, coffee maker and a coffee setup. What was kind of cool about this is they had the coffee maker and the coffee setter uh, set up um, stored in a sliding cabinet that pulled open, located right next to the fridge. And so it was not um, a obnoxious and in your way on top of a counter all the counter space that was in the room could be used by whatever it is that you brought in was it just a coffee maker that okay i thought i mm-hmm. saw a toaster no yeah no it was coffee maker and the coffee setup and then there was the lower shelf on the sliding cabinet that was open for you to store if you had snack items or mm-hmm. something else that you didn't want to put in the fridge so you could put it there on that little um sliding shelf which how about room cute. service Hmm. You didn't use it, did you? I did not use room service. They had a tag in your room if you wanted to order breakfast. Okay. You could write, you could check the items that you wanted and hang it outside the door. 
So I'm assuming so, there was some sort of but they didn't have set menu maybe. Yeah, it wasn't like they didn't have like a like a whole room service menu. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. One thing that I thought the room was lacking a little bit was drawer space. There just simply wasn't very much of it. They had, I think it was a total of four drawers, and two of them were rather shallow. And the other two were a little bit deeper. But I, like, I know I'm people trying like to... that. <laughs> what? I think we all do. <laughs> some are shallow and some, some are deeper. Some are shallow and some are deeper. <laughs> um, I think that this works if it's one or two people in the room. But if I were staying in this room with my three kids, that drawer space situation would not work for me. We would still be having to use our... um, It's cute, but it's... It is cute, but drawer space, there's just not enough to it. Um, Something that was cool was you can see underneath there, there's uh, there were two ottomans that you could pull out to sit on. And I thought that was nice. It gave you... um, more seating in the room so you don't have to sit on the bed if you don't want to. I can, I could see my kids, you know, bringing things to hook up to the TV and sitting on those ottomans and playing games and, and stuff. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. My most favorite part about this room, and you guys might think this is really funny, but that outlet, every outlet in the room had USB plugs. That's nice. Mm-hmm love that it's uh, it's becoming a necessity actually you know with everybody that has their devices staying in the room so Mm -hmm. that's definitely a plus um you don't have to worry so much about bringing your power strips you know when you have a room like that yeah um the desk was like that as well am i correct Mm -hmm. it was yep and it had I, i mean i thought it was just really cool because it had like at the top there were like three spots to plug in USBs. So as long as you had your, you know, your cord, which you do, you just, you could just plug it in right there. And then it had outlets too. So I just think it's really smart. It electrical outlets and USB outlets. And USB outlets. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's really smart on a hotel's part because the thing is, is that you get used to these conveniences and sometimes it's tough to get all of your stuff charged I mean, we all have, I know I have at least three things, no matter what. I have three, a minimum, things that I need charged for for the morning to start the next day. And when a hotel consciously makes decisions about the furniture that they put in their rooms, I'm more inclined to go stay there again. Mm hmm So... Something else that was smart that they were conscious of, they had a safe in the room. I mean, it's normal for safes to be in the room, but this one was of a good enough size that it easily fit a laptop in it Mm -hmm. so when you do leave and you have your devices there was a place where you could put these things away and lock them up uh safely yeah you can see in the picture there jackie's laptop fit in easily and there was still plenty of room for more yeah there was like if i wanted to put my wallet in there were you using the laptop in the safe Looks like it's open <laughs> no, and ready to. I left it open so you could actually see it because there like wasn't how enough. how tall it was, you know. There wasn't enough light otherwise. <laughs> yeah. That's where she was working. <laughs> yeah. I was scrunched in there. <laughs> Trying something new. Yeah. Now, what about your experience in the night? You had to actually sleep there. We've talked about the yes. room, but what was sleeping there actually like? Well, so this is not such a magical part of my stay here. I happened to be in a room that was next to a family that was very obviously from a different time zone. And the walls were not thick enough to to tune them out. To buffer the noise. To give me the ability to tune that out. So the children in the room were bouncing off the walls, squealing and squeaking yelling and crying um you know i'm laying there it's like 11 45 at night um and then the husband or the dad got on the phone and was talking real estate and i could hear very clearly every other word he was saying about oh the sellers aren't gonna like this you know oh you might want to fix that before so he was having this conversation very loudly as though it was the middle of the day And so he was obviously talking to someone in a different time zone because it was, I was getting very annoyed. And I finally ended up getting up out of bed 
and calling down to the front desk because I just, it, it was, I mean, I, I felt like I was in the same room with the man. And the more I laid there, you know, you when you're trying to fall asleep, you kind of try to tune things out and you try to, okay, it's going to stop any minute, but it wasn't stopping. So I'm happy to say that they did send security up and the noise did stop. But, wow. <laughs> Yeah. You called him on that? I sure mm-hmm. did. She, did. she doesn't mess around. Because <laughs> I knew that I had to be up in the morning. And I and I am not a girl that does very well the next day. So you don't start with sleep. just knocking on the wall? Nope. No. Because I don't I, I don't want to have a confrontation with strangers. Okay. You know, I just I, I feel like after the whole Hello Kitty toothbrush drama. <laughs> You know, you just never know what people are going to do. I'm like, who your neighbors are. But what I did do though was I went out into the hallway and I stood there because I wanted to hear which room it was, and they were so loud and so clear that I felt almost as though they could be standing right outside my door. So I stood there in my (laughs) nighty and listened to them for a minute from standing in my doorway, and. I was just shaking my head thinking, wow, these people have no idea that it's practically the middle of the night. Well, what was it like when you called um, the front desk to take care of that situation? How was that treated? How were you treated? And how quickly did they respond? Um, They were very apologetic. And they asked me if I happened to know what room, what the room number was. And I did because I had stood outside Um, I was kind of short with the man because I'm cranky when I'm tired. And so I wasn't being very sweet about it. Um, They were very nice. And they said that they would send security right up. And they did. I mean, they felt bad. I think if it wouldn't have been as late as it was, they probably would have offered to move my room. But I can't say that because that situation. I mean, they, they, they really took care of it right away. I was really impressed. I mean, it stopped pretty quickly. Um, would you say that the staff in general was like that? Or did you have any other, maybe not so pleasant experiences with staff? Like how was your check-in and check-out and everybody was very friendly. Okay. Yeah. Check-in was really quick. Um, I didn't have to do anything to check out because I put my credit card down at the front desk and, uh, didn't have anything charged back to my room. Really pleasant. Um, the lady at the at the coffee bar was cute. I went down um, m- later in the evening after you had left, and I got a soda. And she was really friendly, asking me if I was here with my family or you know here by myself. And it was really nice because she was just kind of making conversation with me, and it was nice. I felt like she cared where I was from, and really friendly. Good. So. Oh, yeah. Cool. So overall, what would you say, how would you say your experience was? Is this some place that you would go again, recommend? What do you think? I would recommend it and I would go there again because I feel like the situation that happened with my neighbors, I feel like that's not something that is in control of the hotel. So everything else was really a great experience there. Um, it, it wasn't their fault that the people were being so loud, like it was broad daylight and they took care of the issue when I brought it to their attention. So I think that says a lot. And I really like that resort. I like the location of it. I like all the amenities that they have. I would definitely go there again. Would you stay there rather than a Disney resort? If the price was right, I sure would. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, over on the disboards, we have uh, a couple threads of a similar nature that we wanted to make you all aware of. <clears throat> the first one is called, please recommend a cheap place to stay off site and where to avoid it. And that thread's uh, been doing good, has a lot of information about inexpensive places and at the same time also giving you ideas of off property places to avoid because... You don't want to end up in the wrong spot. Um, A second one was, um, it's titled, The We Love Bonnet Creek Thread Part 4. Bonnet Creek apparently is in the Wyndham Hotel family. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. 
So it's one of their timeshare resorts, and that's another one that is sort of on Disney property without being a Disney resort. Am I? Is that correct? Do I have that right, Teresa? Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, there's a little bit more information there. What? Nothing. I'm just trying to think of things I learned from Jackie. You want to hear what I learned yeah. from her? I learned that she goes to bed early, and she's a bitch if she doesn't sleep, <laughs> so we'll probably never room together. <laughs> Can I say that? I guess I, I can't say that. <laughs> she can't say that, but she did. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my, I but, just... But okay, you guys go, would have similar... Going um, back. So it was like 11 o'clock and you were calling these people out because they were the kids were loud and the man was on the phone. Oh, I didn't call until midnight. Okay. I let it go for a long time because I thought, all right... Let me just let the kids settle down. They've had yep. a fun day. They just got back from their, you know, right. from all this magic. So they need to chill. So, and that's what I was kind of figuring when I was in bed. But after an hour, I was like, dude, <laughs> stop it. See, I would have knocked on the wall and said, you know, pipe down. I don't know. I would have knocked on the wall, just quietly knocked on the wall. And then if. They knocked back. I'd knock back again. And then I probably would have said something to them. And then she would have gone to the... T- <laughs> I don't think I would have... <laughs> gone to the door and offered... Only I once, only once question. have I ever... And I've stayed in a lot of hotels and I've had a lot of loud neighbors. Only, But it's just my way. Yeah. Only once did we ever call the front desk and that was with the pot smoking people. Oh, you oh my gosh, yes. The whole floor filled with... Oh, boy. And yes. it was quite the high, but... I wasn't ready, you know, it wasn't appropriate in a hotel. Yeah. So we could, the cops came, but that was the only time because it was invading my space. Yeah. Not just my my ears, you know, it was just, but yeah. I, I guess if the guy would have been talking quietly, he was yelling so loud on the phone. Was he yelling or just talking? And I guess it doesn't really it matter. Was it was loud. Matter. It was. If you can hear I mean, him. if if you could, if you picture you're in a hotel room and you can hear every word. That's an older building, though. I'm it is. If it's just bad soundproofing, you know. I mean? It was. Yeah. So imagine if they were doing something else in there. Exactly. That's oh yeah. So I was hoping I'd be asleep by <laughs> you then. You know, talking to his wife or something. Right. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Back to you. Wrap it up. I guess I'm done. <laughs> I don't have anything else to say, actually. Um, I mean, Jackie, did you have anything else you wanted to throw in? I don't. I just, Mm -mm. I thought that this was, I didn't stay there, but looking around the, the property, the location, um, I was impressed. So the rates probably vary depending on, you were there in the middle of the week. (laughs) Probably time of year. It was before, well before Marathon weekend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So they probably hadn't, you know. That's a good opening rate. It's a good starter. It was reasonable. If they could go down that low. Yeah. So. And definitely a viable option for people that don't some people don't want to stay in disney right. resorts so um yeah hopefully this review was helpful and like i said we hope you also check out those disboards threads for more information i think that's gonna do it for this week we'll be coming back next week with an episode on disney springs for you so we hope that you will join us for that and until then trip out hey.